Hi, everybody. We are here today with Stephanie Ari from 3M Manufacturing here in Brookings. We are super excited to be doing our spotlight video today with this local manufacturer. So today we're going to be answering a few different questions with Stephanie, and we'll learn a little bit more about 3M and their work here in Brookings. So Stephanie, why don't you start off by giving us a little bit of information about yourself and your role at 3M in Brookings. Okay, thank you so much, and thanks for having me, and I'm so glad that we can do this for you. I know Manufacturing Week is really different this year because of COVID, and I'm so sad that I can't bring any of my speakers that I've had um, to come to you guys in the past, but you guys are lucky you get me today, so <laughs> here's what we get. So I um, started off doing not human resources. I actually started off being a, a fashion merchandise buyer for a very large retail firm, and I kind of fell into human resources. So most of us old folks, um, we kind of fell into human resources. They didn't really have like a an HR degree that you could get at any XYZ college. So the college that I went to is the University of Iowa. So I do have to say shout out, go Hawks. Um, I love my hot guys. Um, and so I fell into um, human resources and did recruiting, a lot and lot of recruiting, and then started doing staffing, which is kind of like recruiting on steroids. <laughs> it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of people that you're bringing in at, at a time. And so I started off at 3M as the manpower lady. So I hired all the temporary staffing people went away and then was actually recruited to become the human resources representative here. So yeah, it's been a really great fun ride. And that's my, that's my, that's my gig in a, in a quick second. I love it. And when did you start at 3M, Stephanie? So I started at 3M in 2018 as a 3M employee, but I think it was like 2013 that I was here or 2011, I think is when I was here as the manpower lady. And I was there about three years. I'm almost on three years. Woohoo! Here that's this time. so great. Yeah. So, what got you interested in manufacturing? You know, you went from the fashion industry into um, producing medical products here in Brookings, and so how? What is that connection? What sparked your interest in that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so not fashionable. <laughs> but um, you know, when I was living in Colorado, um, and then we moved to South Dakota, so. Um, we moved to South Dakota to be affiliated with uh, South Dakota State University. The majority of our workforce here in Brookings is manufacturing, so it's kind of hard not to fall into it. Um, but yeah, that was where the opening was, and that was where I felt like I could help the most amount of people. Um, we have a lot of employees out here, almost 1,100 employees out here, wow. and you'd be surprised. I mean, just you know, over 668,000 square feet this facility is. So it's just huge and just a lot of moving parts and ways that I can help. So, you know, again, falling in manufacturing was kind of accident. I didn't really know a lot about manufacturing until I started doing staffing and just realized how complex it is. Sure, sure. You know, and I'm sure that there's a lot of different things that cross over between um, some of the organization creativity with the fashion world and some of the things that you do within your HR role um, within a manufacturing facility. You know, you have to be fun and innovative with some of the things that um, you're teaching to employees and going through some of those different processes. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's great that you put that, that you open that up too, because, you know, there are so, one of the things that I think you know, people need to understand, especially those that are in high school and looking at what their next opportunity is, is that there's so many transferable skills. So whatever skill I learn in this industry is going to really help me in this industry. And in human resources, we have to learn how to um, engage our employees. You know, that's probably 80% of what we do as an HR representative is how do we find ways to engage our employees. So sometimes you have to get really, really, really creative. And even when you're recruiting, you have to get really, really creative too, because, you know, we may have X amount of jobs and we may not have X amount of people or vice versa. And so how, how do we attract people to our company? So coming up with creative ways, um, being very social, going out and trying to get people, you know, our greatest source of um, 
people is our current people that are working here. Word of mouth is actually still the best way to get that candidate base. So really, really trying to be very creative as far as you know, having that artsy kind of thing. So, you know, PowerPoints and coming up with really cool PowerPoints and coming up with great posters and, you know, kind of being that force and getting out online and, and talking to people out actually on the floor. It is a little difficult with COVID, but, you know, how do we, how do, we do that to get people involved and engaged? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for those watching, you can just tell when Stephanie's talking that she has this fun and bubbly personality and she's very easy to talk to. So it makes her role um, as a recruiting manager and HR manager um, very easy. You know, she's very easy to just um, have conversations with and share information about her company. So my next question for you is what are some of the products that you guys um, manufacture within your facility here in Brookings? So let me tell you a little bit about 3M, particularly 3M Brookings. So 3M Brookings, we started this plant in 1971. So that's way before a lot of you that have been born. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just been one of those great things. We, we've we had people that have started out as packers, machine operators, summer helpers. And now some of these people are actual managers and product managers, which is really, really at the top level. So you know, as, as a company, you know, our, our goal is to maintain our vision, which is, you know, I'm sure you guys have all seen improving every life through the daily manufacturing of hundreds and hundreds of products out here. And these products help keep food safe. They help ensure sterility um, for our surgical equipment and instruments. And overall, they just improve the recovery of all of the patients that come through the door, right? And so our products are, that are made here are like complex medical dressings, medical tapes, surgical drapes, biological indicators. And people are like, what are biological indicators? Well, they're like these little tubes that you break and these tubes have like a live spore in this. And yes, we grow this spore here in somewhere on here. I don't even have access. It's like FBI access to get to this room. And this live spore, based on when they crush this vial, it goes into the surgical equipment and, and we can tell, hey, this is sterile enough to use for the next surgery. So that's what a biological indicator is. I often get that question. Um, and then, you know, just um, we also have food safety products. So um, places around town like um, Bell, Bell Brands, they they may use our kit to test the safety of the cheese. So it's just, we're really an integral part um, of what we do in the world and also an integral part with Brookings, but we also partner with some of our other manufacturing areas too. So you'll see a lot of us, we talk to each other, especially us HR people, we all know each other. Um, but again, at 3M, it's really just, you know, having those safe products that help everybody in every home and every part of the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I think the cool part about 3M is you guys develop so many products that people probably don't even know that your name is on them because yeah. there's just such a vast number of products, whether it's tape or something within the health industry or the food service, like you had talked about. And so, so many different things. Um, yeah, it what is do you think? so weird. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is your most um, well-known product? Well, and it everybody... doesn't have to be in Brookings, but just... <laughs> Random question. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they, here's, here's a fun fact. I love fun facts. And so our fun fact is we're never more than 10 feet away from a 3M product. So for all of you students out there that are probably done listening to me and picked up your cell phones, that's us 3M product that's holding that cell phone together. That's the reason why it's so light. There's not a lot of screws. So it's a film that's holding that together. If any of you guys have flown planes, this is obviously before COVID, um, it's, it's, it's a film that's holding that plane together. But I think the, the product that everybody knows us the most is the post-it note. Um, so I, you know, I know there's a, there's a project that it actually started in Canada and it was a gal that, you know, she really wanted to prevent bullying. You know, Bullying Prevention Week is next month in October. And so she stuck all these post-it notes on everybody's lockers with all these neat little phrases and things just to kind of encourage people. So if you guys are all familiar with that, as a high school student that started that, she used post-it notes. 
And the company, the, the plant that's closest to us that does that is probably Hutchinson, Minnesota. So, and I actually got to go into that plant and see them making those post-it notes and it's really super, super, super cool. So if you ever get a chance to, to check into that, that's probably the most well-known. But if you are like me, I lived in Colorado, everybody in Colorado knows how to ski. Obviously, Thinsulet <laughs> is also a 3M product. So your warm gloves or your warm coat, all of that. So that's another kind of cool product too as well. Very cool. So you mentioned how many employee, employees are here in Brookings. How many does um, 3M have throughout all their branches globally? So globally, we have 91,000 3Mers approximately. Here we have 1,100 employees. So it is just, it's just insane how, how big we are and, and you know, Earlier, I said that 3M Brookings was built in 1971. We're actually the largest healthcare facility um, plant. Wow. So some, so some plants. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but you know we have like four different business groups, and some plants they'll have products that kind of report to all four business groups. Whereas 3M is kind of unique here in Brookings, where we really only report to the healthcare healthcare business group. So we are the largest healthcare business group here. Wow, very cool. Yeah. So for somebody that has not been inside the 3M facility, what is the work environment like? Um, do you normally work as yourself as an individual? Are you working in teams? Um, in the past during manufacturing week, we tried to do virtual or tours. And this year with COVID, we can't do that. So maybe um, if you could talk a little bit about what that looks like um, within the walls of 3M here. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate with 3M, it is very hard to do tours. I mean, we do give them, but it's very few and far between because, you know, there's so many big machines here and then just the safety and, you know, with COVID now, I mean, I'm sure it's making it even harder, um, but you'll see, you know, especially with COVID now, our, the way our teams are shaped have really changed. We have some people that are working from home. Um, you know, with me being in HR, I'm here, this is my office. Um, otherwise it wouldn't be so gray. <laughs> I, it would be a lot more colorful, trust me. Um, but, you know, most of the people that are on the floor, they work in teams. So you may have like a machine operator and a packer or you may have a machine operator and assistant machine operator and a packer. So they're, they're more working on teams within within the floor but with most of us in the office that are supporting those folks that are on the floor um, we may work individually but we also do a lot of collaboration our company one of our leadership um, skills and our leadership um, functions that we always talk about is collaboration and 3m is really one of those kind of companies that really foster collaboration so you'll see a lot of people getting together to figure out how we're going to do something so like for instance tomorrow um, i'm going to be in a meeting where we look at collaborating on how do we decide what job grade we want to give for this particular job grade so we may have somebody that's actually doing the job or somebody that's very similarly close to doing that job because it's a new job um, or and we may have an engineer obviously we have to have HR because I kind of I'm kind of like the Alex Trebek of it I, I kind of monitor <laughs> it um, and then we've got the product managers and we've got some supervisors on there so and then we're going to try to do some more cross-functional things too as well because we may have some people that have that skill but maybe in a different area just to make sure that we're, we're giving the proper amount of money associated with that particular job. So that's just an idea of how people work together as well as they work individually. Sure, great, great example. Thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. As far as some of the careers and maybe education backgrounds for the employees that are working at 3M, what does that look like? Um, some people would refer to manufacturing and they, they have something in their head, but that's not really what it is. There's so many different opportunities within yeah. the manufacturing industry nowadays. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, and it, it's great that you say that because, you know, I, I come from a family that's highly educated, you know, lawyers and judges and, you know, higher ed. Um, and so I was never really given that opportunity to really see what was behind the doors of manufacturing. And what people need to understand is that manufacturing is really the staple of our economy. 
and also the stable of our industry and our company and our world and our country and you know the people are making things that make our lives better so mm-hmm. we really need to honor that and recognize that and i just don't think that manufacturing really gets enough um accolades for that so it's really great that we do have manufacturing week so given that we have people here that have no education beyond high school and they're so super super very successful we have supervisors that don't have any degrees beyond um, high school and they're very 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 successful we have people that have master's degrees and for whatever reason um, their field either laid them off or it got oversaturated and now they're actually on the floor as machine operators and they're making more money as a machine operator than what they were doing in their own field. So it's just crazy how, you know, you can look at a person and you just never know where their story started and you certainly don't know where their story is going to end. And that's the beauty about being in HR is I get to see that. So we've got people with two-year degrees, too, as well. A lot of our maintenance folks that are dealing with robotics and dealing with um, the equipment and the the cameras on a lot of our machines, they have degrees from places like Fleet Area Tech. And um, so it's just really, really great to see that um, success really doesn't necessarily depend on your degree. Obviously, there are some um, specific positions that do require a specific degree, but you can be successful really that success is determined by you and your persistence and just your ability to just want to go and see and learn and do more. I love that. That is so true. I just love that. Well said, Stephanie. So next we're going to talk about some of the benefits that 3M um, gives employees or encourages employees, um, and then also the impact that you guys have here in our community. I know earlier this fall, you guys um, had a grant that allowed the 3M MAPS program to be brought into the high school um, through a partnership with Lake Area Tech, which is just so great. So students can start to get that hands-on learning experience through some of these different um, programs that are used within your facility. So um, maybe if you wanted to talk a little bit about some of those employee benefits and then also that community impact that you guys have. Okay, so I will talk a little bit about um, what kind of, you know, programs that we have as a company that employees can give back. So 3M, is, as you guys all know, 3M is a very generous company. I know they just gave out millions and millions of dollars um, for social um, injustice programs um, just to kind of right the wrongs of the past. So I just, you know, working with a company that does some, that puts their money through, the, with, puts their money to their, um, you know, with their mouth and they, mm-hmm. they make all these, they, they make all these wonderful statements and then they put the money to it. It really, really just shows you that as an employee, I feel appreciated and feel valued. And so they give us access to be able to donate to things. So like right now we're going through a silent auction um, for United Way. So that's one thing. Um, I have abilities to give to certain organizations here in Brookings and 3M will match some of that. Um, I, as an employee, I can give back to my university. Um, and so we often have um, employees that will give back to their own university. But it's not just about money. It's also about time, right? Mm-hmm. And so we also recognize those that volunteer a lot. Um, I know last year they started a program corporate-wide where people got to take time away from their work, so a leave, um, And then they got to go overseas and do what they do here, but overseas and say a school that doesn't have that ability to do that. So just, yeah, just things like that. And I know during all the riots in in Minnesota, I know a lot of employees went in there to help clean and help, you know, with all the looting and all that stuff. And so just 3M people are just so, so very, very, very generous. And then, you know, with Manufacturing Week, I ask any of my engineers or people on the floor, my trainer, my designers, people that, you know, have two hours, you know, that they can they can give to me so that we can come into your guys' schools and tell you about 3M. So that's all volunteer. And I just, you know, my my employees here are just so caring and so giving, and they're willing to just do anything, even if it's crazy, like, 
last year I had all the new engineers. I said, you know, I need you guys to come over and talk to a bunch of preschoolers. Now keep in mind, most of these people are like early 20s. It's been a while since they've been around a bunch of four-year-olds. You never know what kind of question you're going to get. Right. <laughs> and yep. so they, they went across the street and they went to a preschool and they talked to all these little kids and some of them, the only thing that they knew about 3M is that my mommy or daddy worked there. Right. And, and so it was just, it's so cool that we do that. And we've had, you know, we even give, cross company wide too, you know, during, during all the tick uptick of, you know, COVID masks and, or the N95 masks for COVID, we loan some of our workers from this plant to go help out other plants. So like in Valley, Nebraska, where they make masks and up in Aberdeen, we didn't send any people to Aberdeen because they had some, but we sent them as far as New Ulm, Minnesota as well, just to kind of help out. So mm -hmm. not only giving money, but giving time. So just really want to talk about that too a lot and give it its due due because 3M is a really giving company. Um, and then your other point was, you know, how do, what was your other point? Boy, I just kind of lost that. Nope. That's okay. <laughs> that's all such good information um, about the employee benefits and some of that um, community give back associated with the company. So, yeah, yeah. And I, and, you know, and I think, I think I touched back, you know, I think I touched a lot on, you know, being able to give not only financially, but to give back to the community. And, you know, our engineers are highly, highly in, involved in the STEM projects that are here. And I know some of the robotics things that go on. We also do junior achievement. I see a lot of people giving to junior achievement and things like that too. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know too many companies around here that aren't very giving. Um, I can't really speak directly to them, but I will say with 3M, we are such a giving, giving organization and a company. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You guys have such a good impact on our community. Um, like you said, not only financially, but also that volunteer aspect of things. Um, so why is manufacturing such an important part of our Brookings community? Um, whether that's our economy or the community, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, when we usually do manufacturing week, we talk about you know, how impactful it is in Brookings. And it's, you know, I think it's something like what, one out of every four workers in Brookings works in manufacturing. I mean, that's just insane. That's just insane to me to see that and, and how many of those people work here. And, and so everything that you guys wear, everything that you guys eat, you know, when you watch TV, when you, when you pick up your phones and your cell phones, somebody made that. Somebody made that product. And without manufacturing, our economy doesn't work at, at all. And so I think the key to understand whether you decide that you want to continue to go through college and continue to do more, because let's face it, if you're a finance major, you're thinking, well, what could I do in manufacturing? Well, we do. I, I have a financial person that I report to and talk to and ask if I can have money for this or X, Y, Z. I mean, they keep, they, they, they keep, they keep records of what our plant spends and what our plant is making. I mean, whether you choose to go to college or not, there is a job for you somewhere in manufacturing mm -hmm. and you get to be a part of an organization that is making your life better in one way, shape, or form. And to me, I think that's not only admirable, but I think it's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. Um, what would be your advice to somebody who maybe has an interest in entering the manufacturing industry world? I say, first of all, be open, listen, because, you know, some, I, especially me being an HR person, I like to talk. I talk a lot. And so it's a challenge. I have to learn how to kind of rein it back in and, and listen. But, you know, I, I say just pick your – the biggest thing is to pick your parents' brains. I'm a parent, and I love it when my kids pick my brain. They don't do it very often. <laughs> but, yeah, we do know something, guys. You know, just, you know, pick your parents' brain, like why they chose the – 
the route they chose and you know you you do come from your parents you're probably going to share some sort of commonalities and interests and skill sets right you're going to you're going to have that so pick, that's that's my first thing is to to pick your parents brain and then find somebody that resonates with you you know you guys are we're, being in Brookings we're in such a great community that our community always gives back. And you can always, I, I, I've always seen that Brookings high schools and the middle schools and so forth really do a really good job of trying to get different people from the community to come to your school and to speak. Mm -hmm. Don't let that person go away without asking a question because we are more than willing to talk to you and we are more than happy. If we can, if we can be the first spark in you to get you through your career and we're the person that you remember five, 10 years, 20 years on down the line that encourage you to come to 3M or encourage you to do the job that you're wanting to do. That is, that's, that's, that's why we do what we do. That's, that's what makes us tick um, as adults. And so I, I say pick people's brains to like none other. And then I know the students, you know, they, you guys love Snapchat and you know, your little one word, uh, responses and sometimes it's never a word it's just pictures you know once you start getting a little bit more professional and you start looking at graduating look at LinkedIn LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a great professional source and then just start accepting getting following people you know following those that are doing those things and you just never know who your connections are you know yes. my first job here in Brookings you're going to just die when I tell you I got it right out of the park. And, and it's not baseball terms, although I love baseball. I literally got that job out of the park. I was oh. hanging out in the park. I was a stay-at-home mom trying to get back into the workforce, playing with the kids. And this guy was asking me, hey, what, so what do you do? And I said, oh, I just moved here from Colorado looking for a job. Oh, well, what do you do? Well, I'm an HR rep. And he's like, oh, we need one. It's only temporary, but we need one. And that was just the, the spark. A couple of years later, he is now very, very high up at another manufacturing plant. So, oh, cool. and we still keep in contact with each other too. So that's the other thing too is, you know, keep in contact with contacts and build your network. You know, you guys build your friends and, and, and sometimes you guys want to keep your friend base small. I totally get that. But the business world is so different. Expand your network. Make it as big as you possibly can because you just Preach. never know. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just never know when you'll get some job randomly. Most of my jobs, I didn't get through just specifically going to a website, putting in an application, and then getting called for an interview. Most of those, they called me and they said, put in an application. Mm -hmm. Yes. That I'll is say 90% of my jobs that that's how I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That mentorship piece is huge. So, you know, um, you can start to explore some of your interests and then also that building your network is just, it's about who you know in this mm -hmm. business world. And so building that network is just so important, especially starting yeah. at a young age. Yeah, and don't just have your network be everybody that does everything that you like. Like, you know, if you're an engineer, your network shouldn't be 100% engineer. Because what if you want to change? You know, I mean, the average person changes their career, what, seven times? <laughs> you know, so, and I've seen, you know, I've got engineers that are now supervisors. You know, um, I've got people that started off doing, you know, social services, and now they're on the floor um, being a machine operator. They just mm -hmm. decided it wasn't for them. So build, you know, people who don't think like you necessarily, and this is just in life in general, people who don't think like you, those are the, those are the ones that are going to help you expand. It's the people that think like you that are great networks, but I don't know if they necessarily expand you as a person. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me yeah. today, Stephanie. This has been so fun. We hope you all learned a lot. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, via Facebook message. Send us a comment on YouTube, or you can email us at sarah at brookingsedc.com. 
Happy Manufacturing Week. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye.